but when you're going to find a fault, all you have to do is hook up your red lead to the wire, black lead to the ground rod, and then turn on your transmitter. Now this is a 3 watt transmitter, but when you're in fault find mode, it's pushing out quite a bit of voltage. It's pushing out actually 90 volts of power. And so <clears throat> when you're in fault find mode, it automatically goes to zero output because it doesn't want somebody touching the end of the leads and getting shocked by that 90 volts. And so you want to go ahead and turn up your output. There's a bar graph up in the top left-hand corner telling you where your output is, and I'm at 20% right there at two bars, 40% at three bars, and then 100% at four bars. There's no harm in throwing out 100% on a fault locate. It's just going to cause you to pick it up easier with the receiver. And so I would go ahead and do that if you want to. You just got to wear your batteries down faster. You know, and if you're in close proximity, if the fault's really close to the transformer here, you may not want to turn it down a little bit. But <clears throat> for the most part on this one, we'll go ahead and go to 100%. Now this is running a lithium ion battery inside of it, so it's going to last a long time versus alkalines. If you're running the alkalines, it's not going to last long at all. Because in fault find mode, you're using quite a bit more power than a regular locate mode where you're using 30 volts. But you can locate this line out first if you want to by using one of the fault find, or one of the uh, locate frequencies, which is 512, 8, or 33. But say if it's already located out like this one is, we'll just go ahead and go to fault find mode, which is 8 kilohertz as well. But in fault find mode, you have a little A-frame icon showing you that you're in fault find mode. So you go to the A-frame icon, 8 kilohertz, and then you go ahead and turn it up all the way to 100% and we're set to go. Our ground rod's good, it's making noise letting me know that it's a completing a circuit and we can go ahead and get, use our A-frame now. So on the A-frame, when you plug this in, um, it will set itself up automatically so you don't have to uh, worry about what mode you're in. Just get it plugged in correctly, you'll hear it beep, you'll see the arrows show up on the screen and you're already picking up decibel readings. But you don't have to be directly over the wire when you're fault locating. You can be off to the side at you know two, three, four, five foot if you want to. You know sometimes there's a nice concrete side rock right where you want to be using the A-frame. Well, just get over to the good ground and get the biggest thing is you want to get good ground contact with those spikes. And so you go ahead and follow it off to the side where you have good grass and just follow your arrows and then when your arrow flip-flops then you worry about trying to pinpoint it a little bit more so um, but here we're we're over the top of the line here and I have an arrow showing me forward it's pointing out that way and I have a decibel reading reading about 57 decibels right now what's happening is remember that that ground rod over there is about the same decibel level as the fault down down the way here and the decibel level is going to start high like this and it, because it's still picking up the ground rod and then it's going to kind of plateau off once we get about halfway to the fault and then the decibel level will start to climb back up again. When you start to see it come back up, you want to lower your intervals. You shorten the intervals up with your A-frame because you know you're getting closer to the fault. But right now we have a 57 decibel level. It's telling us to go forward. I want to keep the green leg of this A-frame always facing the same direction as the front of my receiver the red towards the back and so if I'm going to turn around I want to turn both of them around okay and if I plug it in this way it's still going to arrow still pointing me this the, the right direction but I just don't want to turn it independently I want to turn them together because they're one unit they have a little holster here that will holster it if you want to use one arm but I like to kind of hold on to it so I can use my other arm to kind of push down on it especially when there's frost in the ground so I got a 57 decibel lit reading. My arrow's pointing me to go forward. I'm gonna go ahead and probably go 10, 15 foot. And you can see we already have some red marks on the ground, so somebody's already located the path. But now I got a 43, 45 decibel reading. And it's still telling me to go forward, so I'm gonna go keep on going. Still telling me to go forward. I'm about the same on my decibel level, around just the high 30s. So I, I'm plateauing, so which means I'm about halfway there. So now I'm going to keep on going and about the same, about a 42, low 40s, high 30s, still telling me to go forward. Now I'm going up, I'm around 48 to 50 decibel level, go forward. 
and now we got a 77 decibel level. We got to be really close to it now. It's, that's pretty high. And then it goes a little bit further. And now the arrow flip flopped, telling him to go back. He's got a 71 decibel level, so he splits his distance in half. Now he's telling him to go forward with a 67 decibel level. Forward. And he's got a 1920 right there. He's got to be right on it. Now when it's that way, you know, it's going to tell you exactly where it's at down to the end. If you're operating without a locate, can you go yep, now that he's found it. across? He found it this way, so now he's going to go ahead and go this way and try to triangulate it. And when the X marks the spot, it's telling him to go forward. Now it's telling him to go back that way. Now forward, so now he can draw himself a line this way and draw himself a line that way, and you know right where it is. If you want, you could also <clears throat> just hit this right button here and go into locate mode and locate it out. Batteries just went dead, but you could locate it out and then just hit the right button twice more and go back into A-frame mode. Or you can just unplug it if you wanted to, and that way you'll get a depth reading to show up. And so after you found the fault this way, you can go ahead and find it, locate it. It's right there, and it's measuring two foot one inch deep, so you know right where to dig and how deep it is. What if you go in what mode for that? Uh, just regular eight kilohertz. Since we're using eight kilohertz for fault locating, eight kilohertz can be used for line locating too. 